Hi guys, Nick60 here, coming to you with a video tutorial for Sorcerer King, which is currently in early access. I know that there is a, a tutorial currently available on the forums, and that the game itself is pretty intuitive, but I figured it wouldn't hurt to throw together something like this, just out of, just to make things, just to add a little bit more convenience. So, the first thing that you see here is your city, you got your one army, you got a shard, which may or may not actually be within your city bounds, and you got some command options. So, first thing, when you see these shards, you're going to want to build shrines, because they provide mana at the cost of logistics. Four for one, not bad. And you really want the mana because spells plus other fun stuff. So there, we built a shrine, we cost a logistics, but now we're earning 2.3 mana instead of 1 mana. Next thing we're gonna do is you left click on your city and you go down to actions and you can see what it, ha what it is capable of. This is very Civilization-esque, at least the older versions. I actually haven't played the newer versions and you have the options to build a number of things. You have barracks which improves logistics, decreases food, and opens up some new units to be built. Library which allows you to uh, produce various crafting abilities. Garden which increases food. Magician Academy which you can use to make a uh, build battle mages, watchtower to increase your city will passively damage enemies that come within its territory. The watchtower increases the amount of damage they do. Work camp, which increases production. And magic, which, yeah, it the city then produces mana as well. And then there's other things that can be purchased and built post, uh, uh, well, as you advance up the line for now. Let's grab a barracks for, no, you can also train up people, and we're actually going to grab a pioneer. So, we will get to moving the units soon, but this is just for some basics for stuff you're going to need. Crafting, here you have weapons, armor, lots of armor. Scrolls, which provide extra spell capability. Potions for healing mana. Uh, just abilities, and these will be expanded as you learn stuff. And other for various abilities. In this case, two rings are immediately available. And what happens is, these you will equip to any individual unit. Like this, three units here. We have Tandis. Sir Kale and Bailey. So any one of them can equip any of a variety of items and weapons and rings and whatnot in order to enhance their capabilities in combat. So if you want them all to have plus three defense, you have to build them, th you have to create three sets of chain boots. But then if you have things like potions, these can just be used at any time and by any unit so out in the field you can use them t I mean not out in the field but here in the overworld map you can just use them like probably just use the mana potion whenever you get it to improve mana unless you have a lot and feel like saving it or healing potion if someone was hurt in a fight or in a fight you can use the healing potion by when a unit's turn comes up to heal them as well Spells which can be cast at any given point in time. Uh, adds 5 production to city that turn and it stays. So it's st so this enchantment will can only be cast once per city and then it will continue to provide extra production to the city. Eye of the Eagle which permanently reveals 3 tiles around a selected area. And Mantle of Fire which is an in battle ability which 
as you can see it engulfs one of your guys in flames and they damage anyone that attacks them and you have everything city only unit and world so you can also once you get a lot you can split them up cities which allows you to check on any city you have all the cities you have in this case we only have one quests this part is not quite completed but as you can see here pretend the screen looks really cool but it is where you will be keeping track of what your current objectives are in this case we have stopping the sorcerer king we have what we have achieved and we have minor factions which haven't really been implemented yet and we just have apparently a single realm which we can garner favor with or he can garner favor with we have the menu which can provide a whole uh, a decent number of options this is actually for an early access game more than I normally see so that's that's good now oops back to game my bad now on to actual unit movement you left click and then you right click to move your unit which uh, uh, it varies from game to game then you can deselect with left click I know that from game to game as I said it varies sometimes it's left click then left click it sometimes it's right click to right click being turn based you can't actually select as you can see left clicking and dragging moves the moves the map instead of uh, creating a selection menu I can't normally right click unless well you can't normally right click you have to left click for everything which is good to know it took me a second the first time playing and you can also split up your army by clicking on an individual unit in the army in this case we're gonna say Bailey and ha ordering them to move individually and to pick up things like treasure chests you just order them to move into the treasure chest area and in this case we have nectar two glass flagons and a crystal flagon and Bailey has one more move so let's move him through the forest and as now something that you didn't see is that forest movement actual actually takes two movement points per movement if you only have one you can still move in but then but normally it takes two so let's split this up a little bit further let's take Sir Kale who has three movement points one two three and we now have midnight stone finally we have Tandis the warrior who already moved one point to get here it took two points to move into the forest as you can see and we'll t use our final point to grab this treasure chest which has two glass flagons mushroom spores and a crystal flagon here we have a warlock's hut which is where we will check out on the next turn but before we go there I probably should have covered this already we have available capabilities or resources sorry we have crystals metals mounts mana and logistics and they and as you can see I haven't found any spots for these yet mana is building and logistics is working on it finally we have manage magic options we have and we can adjust this by moving this back and forth up and down all around and you can see that the further in blue it is the more skill and the less mana and lore but if you move it over you can instead change to lore which I believe is research while skill uh, increases the uh, wizard leveling up who is the sovereign that we discussed and he'll appear in a second and then finally we have mana which is of course 
ability to produce even more. For now we're going to leave it relatively even-ish. Probably focus a little bit more on skill and mana. And finally, our Sovereign. New spells which he can learn. For the moment, we are going to choose... Race Skeleton seems like more units the better, so we're going to go with that, especially since it's cheap. And finally, we end our turn. Now, we can choose whoever we want to move first. Let's start with beginning the process of regrouping, because regrouping is good. Actually, let's just regroup these two. Bailey's going to go on an exploration because when you go on road as you can see it significantly reduces the cost of movement four per movement so we can have Bailey move out pretty far and pray that he doesn't run... well we're actually going to grab that treasure chest instead which is for iron and nectar though unfortunately it looks like Bailey will be attacked so before we get, move to move uh, our other units Bailey can't move anymore but as you can see there are some uh, disparities here both of them have a 7 attack capability. The destroyer, however, only has 10 health points to Bailey's 13. Though the destroyer can move 4 squares on the overworld map to Bailey's 3. So the overworld map part won't come in, but the health points and attack will, assuming he decides to attack first. In the meantime, Sir Kale has already moved, and Tandis the warrior is now going to explore this warlock's hut. And these different locations will provide various different uh, uh, options depending on where you go. In this case we have the option to get items and leave, lecture the warlock on customer satisfaction, or offer the guard a better job. We're going to offer the guard a better job. In which case he will agree and become a soldier unit, which has 10 attack, 3 movement points, and 21 health points. And we have one more movement capability, which we will use to begin the process, to continue the process of regrouping. Athica has gone down by one turn in terms of production time for our pioneer, and that's a pretty civilization-like capability. Now, before we end, we have some crafting options. We have the ability to craft chain boots and a minor healing potion. Actually, we can produce two. So first we're going to produce chain boots, which provide plus three defense. And because it looks like Bailey is going to be attacked soon, we're going to give it to him instead of leave it in our inventory. And as you can see, we can switch between either inventory or any of our currently available units. We are also going to produce two healing potions because we can and because they're useful. And these don't get and these get added to the universal inventory, which allow any unit to use them as needed. So now we have two of those. And now that everyone has moved, we will end our turn. It appears as though the destroyer has decided to run away. So Sir Kale will move in and claim a treasure chest, which is four flawless iron and mana berries. And then we will move him into this unit, which, because of his movement, we only have one movement left, because this the army is always as fast as your slowest unit. And we will move it over one. Bailey is out here probably wondering what's going on 
so we will move him further out. Now, we have found enemies. Rather than challenge them on our own, we are going to begin back in regrouping so that we will have four out of five army units available for attack. However, before we end, we will once again check. We can now produce chain boots and a minor mana potion. The mana potion provides 10 more mana, which we will craft immediately. And the chain boots, of course, provide 3 defense again. Which this time we will give to Tandus a warrior, because he's our most powerful unit and we are going to try to use him as sort of the battering ram. And to get to your units, you go come down here, where you can give orders to various units. We have pass, which is skip turn. Guard, which is protect this tile. Any bad guys come close, they will automatically attack. Explore, where they will randomly wander around. And it is equip that we are worried about, which is where we can find various units. We can see what he has equipped, which is a warrior's blade and the new chain boots. His abilities which is counterattack, warrior, smite, and sweep. These two are passive. These two you select in battle, which we will get to when we go to a full battle, as well as some various other stats for him. And you can check all your units this way. Skills, as your warrior as you level up through battle, you can pick new skills through this tree. And finally equipment. This is where you can tell them outside of battle to use their health potions or you can use things such as the mana potion which grants 10 more mana. So we're going to end our turn again and begin working our way towards another treasure chest. Again for flawless iron and nectar and we will craft another set of chain boots, this time for Sir Kale, and another healing potion, because we're going to work our way towards a pretty hefty battle soon. Bailey is going to move down this way and begin exploring down for us. And as you can see, the fog of war generated by trees is pretty, pretty hard to get through. Now, I see another treasure chest, and Bailey will do his best to regroup, and that is it. However, we now have Sovereign level up because of the, what's being generated here. Our Sovereign is ready to level up. We have the option of Clairvoyance, where he can cast one more spell in battle. Arcane, where spells cost 10% less mana. In Scholarship, where spells are learned 10% faster. We're going to choose Arcane because spells are fairly expensive. And our Pioneer will be ready soon. In the meantime, we're going to move our unit in and collect another four Flawless Iron and Mushroom Spores, which will be crafted into yet another set of chain boots, and this time given to our soldier. So everyone now has chain boots. Bailey will move into our new army unit, which has two more movement points left, and will begin advancing back up. This appears whenever the warlock, whenever the sorcerer king, is attacking a shard. Normally, you're going to have to try to rush to get to the shard, though go to only takes it, you to it in the map. Let's click that, that, that now and see what's going on. So, this army must be what is currently attacking him, and as you can see, it is fairly far away on the mini map, and there isn't much <clears throat> that we can do about it right now. We can left click on the minimap to take us back down to where we need to be. And our units currently have three movement spaces. And we know there's other bad guys up here, so we're going to collect this Midnight Stone. 
and move our next turn. Now, as you can see, we have built our Pioneer, and Athica is going to need something new to do. In the meantime, we're going to have to trudge through the forest, which is going to be slow, and then we're going to have our Pioneer start moving to follow along. Now, Pioneers have decent view range. However, oh, they have no attack capability. So we're going to use him as a sort of explorer right now. Now what this is, is a cave. So there's plenty of stuff to be found in caves, typically random things, and often high-level bad guy stuff, but also pretty good rewards. So before we end our turn, let's tell Athica what to do. In this, idle cities and idle units will automatically take you before it lets you end your turn. So, for building, let's build a barracks this time. And, to speed things up, let's enchant our city with our now significantly reduced enchantment to take it from 12 to 9. And that will stay as a permanent enchantment. So, we have a decent sized army. We can have a look. In the meantime, let's move up onto the hill and move around, trying to find a suitable place for the pioneer. You can, you can create an outpost anywhere, but I'm looking for a place that actually has resources right now. So, before we move to the attack, because we'll be getting close to the end of this video then, let's have another quick look around. Now, onto the, onto the cave. It appears as though we have not, in fact, found something to kill. By sheer chance, you have come across a mysterious cave, its entrance well concealed by foliage and rock. Well, the giant skull was probably a clue. Deliberately concealed, someone or something is hiding in there. Not the bashful sort, you walk in to introduce yourself. It turns out to be a hermit living there. A man who long ago decided to remove himself from the concerns of the outside world. This irritates you up to your eyeballs in the affair of the outside world. And you're about to give him a lecture when he offers to give you a present if you keep his hideout a secret. He offers you either a text full of ancient magical knowledge or a scroll containing a powerful spell. You know, the kind of things hermits typically have lying around. Now, we can lecture him, which may get him to join, we can, or we can take the text or the scroll. Let's take the scroll, which gets us a cursed scroll, which removes the target's defense for three turns. It gets us two cursed scrolls, which still remove the target's defense for three turns. So, since that didn't turn out to be a fight, let's start moving towards a fight. And as you can see, the Doomsday Counter has started to finally tick down, which is bad. Uh-oh. This destroyer might decide to attack our pioneer. We're going to have to retreat back to try to save him. Our city has leveled up, and we can pick a stop a tile in which to expand our kingdom. As you can see, there's various amounts of resources available, almost all of them labor. Now, we're going to expand here, which will get us extra labor in this direction, and a little extra food in this direction. As you can see here.
And that is unfortunately it for our units, and we're going to have to hope that the destroyer doesn't attack our pioneer. Well, he hasn't attacked the pioneer yet, so let's try to counter him before, before he can. Now you can choose to auto-resolve, and with this combat rating, it's probably a given thing. Cancel, run away, or battle. Obviously we're going to battle. Now, this is your order of events, which is determined by various unit initiative. You cannot move your units out of order. So, yeah, I kind of made a mistake before in an earlier playthrough. So, that's a good thing to know that you can't move them out of order. Down here, you find individual units' attack capabilities, movement speed, health, and their various abilities. Some of them are ranged, some are not. In this case, Tandis has no ranged ability, so we will not be able to reach him this turn. Smite does 50% more damage and takes 5 turns to cool. Sweep, which attacks all the enemies around him if there's more than one, as well as the 3 health potions and 2 curse scrolls that we found. So, we're going to right click to move him here. and then use a curse spell left click and then left click to use it which he's going to resist Bailey I could move him up to attack but I'm actually going to use his howl ability which will add attack abilities to the rest of my units Horseman will now move and use an ability that he apparently has to knock our Sir Kale back. However, Sir Kale can, has enough movement to charge right back into position, and he is, and his options are to cleave, which will swing at three adjacent enemies, which is pointless as there's only one, shield bash, which will knock the opponent back four tiles but we have no ranged abilities other than attempting to curse him again so instead we're just going to right click him for a regular attack and as you can see Bailey joins in all adjacent units will attack an enemy unit if able when you make an attack so if we move our soldier forward and have them and right click again to have them an attack all three units will very solidly let this guy know how they th what they think of him. As you can see, experience is divided up, health is calculated, and sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't loot. So let's see if we can't get our pioneer. Oh, it would appear as though we have an enemy army. Now that army probably isn't going to do much moving. Now it's a shame that I cannot find any resources around which to build our, have our pioneer build, but for the moment I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. It appears our sovereign has leveled up again. We have channeler, which every shard provides plus one magic per turn, as well as the spells learn 10% faster and clairvoyance again. This time, let's choose scholarship for faster spell, uh, for faster spell development, and end our turn. Now, let's clear the way for our pioneer to to finally find something. This is going to be a four-on-four four match. They have two barbarians, as well as two dire wolves. We have. Sir Tandis, a soldier, Sir Kale, and Bailey, who seems to be a friendly direwolf. Unfortunately, they also have the ability to enrage themselves, basically, for a plus one attack. However, let's see if we can't finish this fairly quickly. We're going to use our smite ability this time. Sorry. 
Left click, not right click. To take the wolf out immediately. Bailey is going to move. Bailey isn't going to move and is again going to howl. For plus one attack. Horseman is going to attack Kale, who just can't seem to catch a break. And there was that passive counterattack ability coming in. Now, rather than have him just stay there, I'm going to have him move one and then right click to attack with the support of Bailey in order to begin moving around. Now, rather than. Yeah, we are actually going to focus on this one guy first and again right click to attack. It does get confusing how you have to left click for abilities and well it probably shouldn't be confusing for left click abilities and then right click to attack it just is for me. Now there's only one enemy he'd have to be standing here so we're just going to use a regular attack. Have Bailey move forward and use bleed which does a regular damage and then one extra damage per turn. I really have to stop right clicking for the abilities. Now let's actually try shield bash. I don't know if it will work with something behind him but it should knock the enemy back four tiles. It did. It slows down the actual happenings. We're gonna have to pass. Wait, no, we're going to use our next scroll of curse. Now, in order to help get him out of the way, we're gonna move and then we're gonna use our sweep attack, which they both dodged. We're gonna have Bailey move up and bleed has four more turns left so attack normally now we cannot sweep for another eight turns we cannot smite for another five turns so we're going to have to use a regular attack to get that wolf out of the way then Bailey again will move up and again they will be dodged. Finally, Sir Kale gets another turn. This guy is really good at dodging. And finally our soldiers again. And we have finally defeated the Barbarian Army with everyone leveling up. As well as getting Clouded Ruby and Clouded Topaz. Now that was all the movement points for Tandis the Warrior's Army. However, we still have movement points for our Pioneer who can move up and collect some loot from their lair, which is four flawless iron and a silver band. Now there's no point in creating more chain boots right now. However, we can create a studded leather helm or leather gloves. We're going to create leather gloves and give them to Bailey of all units and then another set for Sir Kale since he can't catch a break. And as we can see there are Skeletal Wanderers army upcoming but that is it for this early access video tutorial. It is a shame that I haven't been able to find any resources but the short version is you will find something such as an iron shard or horses or something on the map and then you build your pioneer at that spot to get the extra resources so that is an explanation of what the pioneer is supposed to do and I am sorry for not being able to demonstrate that so this has been an early access tutorial for sorcerer king I hope you liked the video. If you want to see more, check out my channel. If you want to keep up to up if you want to keep track of upcoming videos, feel free to subscribe or or check out my Twitter, Nick60vids. 
And if you really like this video and are feeling generous, feel free to take out take a look at my pa Patreon, Nikolai60, links in the description. Thank you for your time, Nick60, signing off. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> I said all that, but I have one more thing to say. Our champion needs to level up. <laughs> I am sorry. We are going to choose P Poison Dart, which gives him a ranged attack. And that is how you give them new abilities and capabilities. It, some of them are passive, some of them are active. As you saw, that was arranged. And now, thank you for your time. I apologize for the mix-up. Nick60 signing off. See you guys next time.